Okay, so we were just talking about talking about graphing techniques. We had talked about uh, vertical translations or vertical shifts. When I had the function x squared minus five, and anytime we <coughs> write these functions down, you need to list every single thing you know about it. Anything you can tell me. First, you start with the shape. What kind of shape do we have here? We know that this guy, when graphed, is a parabola. You know the shape, and what tells you the shape? The x, the x squared. The x squared. This is the dominant feature of this function, so he determines your shape. The 5 is just there to screw it up. <laughs> now, what does that minus 5 mean? Go down five. That means we go down 5 units. So here's what I'm going to do for you. <coughs> I'm going to take... Yeah, say hello to my little pan. And I'm going to graph the original x squared guy. Now, the original x squared guy had a vertex here at 0, 0. Then he had 1, 1, 2, 4, and 3, 9. Do you remember those key points? Because those key points are going to be key for what we're going to be doing next. If you count out, here's 0, 1, 2, 3. What's 1 squared? 1. What's 2 squared? 4. And 3 squared is? Nine. I don't need to make a t table. I know how it moves. Now there was also something really neat about the parabola, and that was its symmetry. What type of symmetry did it did it exhibit? Symmetry about the y-axis, so I can reflect these points over here. I don't really have to do the math again. Now. So this was my original x squared. Now, is this going to be my final graph? No. Because no. what am I doing with all these points? I'm shifting them down five units. So that means this vertex will not be located at 0, 0, but it will be located where? Negative 5. Whoa, negative 5 is zero. not a point. 0, negative 5. Whoa. There is my new vertex. Now, this is what I like to do. I like to lightly dash out the crosshairs that would go through this point. And the reason I do that is because this is going to act as my new origin, and almost like a new set of axes. And all I'm asking you to do is from this guy, if you pretend that's the origin, graph the parabola from this, which means if I make this 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, you put your points. What's 1 squared? 1. What's 2 squared? 4. And what's 3 squared? 9. Do you see what I did there? I'm basing it off of this new horizontal line that goes through my vertex. That's the exact same thing that I have right here in my original guy, except that horizontal line going through the vertex was the x-axis. So it's a little bit easier that way. So you can see here, this is one unit. This is 4, and that's 9. So it follows that same pattern that I had for my original parabola. Now, since we know there is symmetry, I can reflect these points across that line of symmetry. Now, do I have room to go out to get another point? If I go out here to 4, what's 4 squared? 16. Do I have enough room for 16? Well, this is 5, and that's 9, so that's not enough. So, all I can do is just carefully graph my parabola. Now, notice how I did not have enough room vertically when I put it in 4 to get the 16. So, if you cross this 4, you're crossing it too soon because you'd actually cross it somewhere up here at the top. Okay. Well, I'll just reflect this on the other side. Make sure you get a nice, smooth curve going here with your parabola. And that should be your graph. If you don't go to the edge of the graphing window, you will lose points. If you do not have the arrows at the end, you will lose points. When you graph, you plot as many points as will fit on here, and you go all the way to the edge. 
you will show me accuracy. Any questions about how I took that x squared shape and I just went down five? That's good? Good? All right. Let's look at the other guy that we had. What was it? For the other one, we said f of x is equal to, what do you guys have? Now, when you do your cube root, don't get crazy there with that top bar and go whoosh, because that's not going to go well. It's the cube root of x and then plus 2. Now, when I graph this guy, I need to know what my shape looks like. So let's refresh our minds about what that shape is. My key points were right here, 0, 0, 1, 1, and I plugged in 8 and I got 2. Do you remember that? <coughs> This was my key shape. This is my parent function. Is that the name? It's the cube root function. Yeah, not really. It's not like how the squaring function is called a parabola. I, if, if it has a name, I'm not familiar with it. Maybe that's something to look up during the break. What am I going to do with this shape according to what this function says? I'm going to go up two. That means if I take this key point, I go up two units, I'm going to be right there. Now if you pretend, just like we did last time, that you have a new set of axes going through this, that may help you get the rest of your points. The key points for the cube root function, and you have that picture from yesterday, you've got that T table memorized, because that's what every good student would do, What's the cube root of 1? One? 1. What's the next number you'd plug into the cube root? Eight. Come out here, 8 units. The cube root of 8 is? 2. two. Let's go back the other way. Cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. The cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. Now, notice I'm doing that from that new set of axes that I drew going through that base point that was the origin. Okay. So I keep the same shape as before. Make sure you put arrows at the ends. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. The cube root function is not the easiest guy to draw, nor is the cubing function. You just have to suck it up and deal with it. Okay, That's, that's what I have to do. Now, these are my hand-drawn graphs, but let's check with what the computer gave me. So here's your square root function, not square root function, your squaring function, and you see that that is the same thing that I have. Maybe we can even put it right on top and, well, you, I guess it's not tracing paper where you can see through it well enough. But you see how I took this guy and he's just shifted down right here. You see the same thing for my cube root function. Everything matches up the way that it should. You've got your, your most important point right here at 0, 2. And the rest of the points just kind of line up. 